all this is prasanna lohar from dcb bank i welcome you all at the third edition of the summit 2022 uh, we have a very good experimentalized economy being driven by uh, this technology uh, today we have mr colonel dr indrajit singh uh, chief cyber security officer from vara we have sarat chandra who is one of those blockchain influencer uh working as a vice president research and strategy at arthadi we have dr lopa mudra basu uh, vp ism cyber security and technology controls at jp morgan chase and company and finally we have uh, dr pavan tuggal advocate supreme court india so friends uh, today we'll talk a lot about uh, uh, blockchain uh, which is a uh, people typically call as a uh, internet 2.0 uh, which is a uh, upcoming rather upcoming it is becoming a real technology a lot of companies banks healthcare companies uh, countries are adopting blockchain and uh, relevant ecosystem called digital assets metaverse nfts so we'll talk a lot about today why blockchain is making a lot of difference why companies countries academia should really adopt a uh, blockchain as soon as possible uh, for their customers for their students for their uh, business models operational models so that in a in a go right we can really see very trending business models uh, built on these technologies uh, i think let's understand what is meant by uh, blockchain right what is uh, what is this decentralization into blockchain so sarat uh, uh, indrajit dr pavan would you like to highlight yeah. uh, what is meant by decentralization blockchain why it is really making change right considering what we have seen in our, our uh, era of internet which is based upon web apps mobile apps why all of a sudden we are talking of a decentralization why it is so important ahead of a centralization yeah uh, we can begin with uh, uh, dr karnal indraji ji yeah yeah uh, thank you very much uh, thanks cxo tv for having me here and uh, thanks prasanna uh, it's a really a pleasure to meet you and uh, sharat and uh, lopa and uh, dr pavan dugal uh, you know just to begin with and uh, blockchain is really making a noise for last couple of years and we are seeing so much of traction which is happening in this area and primarily when we say a decentralization in a blockchain it refers to a transfer of control and this is in making from a centralized entity and that's what we have been talking all this while we had the inter- internet where we had the internet individuals organizations groups thereof to a distributed network right and decentralized networks actually strive to reduce the level of trust that's what we are really working on and the participants must place in one another and it deter their ability to exert authority or control over one another in ways that degrades the functionality of the network and that is what the blockchain has been bringing the power of right and what blockchain really does it's reduce the transaction cost right and in the decentralized economy it can generate distributed trust and empower the decentralized platform potentially becoming a new foundation for the decentralized business models right and uh, that's where we are moving forward to we are talking over defi uh, which is really you know picking up over a period of time and while in the financial industry you know the blockchain allows for the rise of decentralized finance services which tend to be more decent decentralized innovative interoperable and borderless and transparent so we are trying to work it out where we are trying to move from a centralized environment to a decentralized environment and you know it's being empowered by the blockchain technology decentralized uh, defi uh, has a potential to broaden the financial inclusion facilitate open access and create permissionless innovation create new opportunities for entrepreneurs and the innovators and the recent development are you know which are kind of empowering the new paradigm uh, centered around the decentralized and this intermediation so that's how we are looking at the decentralized platforms put together and it will really take off the need for the intermediaries in the financial transaction and it will facilitate the fear to peer to peer transactions through distributed trust right and uh, it's really going to increase uh, the scope and uh, e- efficiency of peer to peer transactions what we are looking at turning previously infeasible business models into a viable ones right that's the power which we bring on table and uh, while we talk of uh, the financial inclusion the financial services would become more decentralized 
uh, innovative, uh, inter interoperable, borderless, and transparent. Right. So that's how the decentralized is really going to play up in times to come. Yeah, I think uh, wonderfully explained, uh, Indraji ji. I think about the power of decentralization. Uh, what we have seen in the past, uh, the power of uh, monodromous banking. Uh, we have seen up and downs in the uh, history of uh, money down there during World War or uh, rise of a Bitcoin kind of a decentralized protocols to send or uh, some exchange some values. I think I think in in my way, this is also becoming reality and the kind of a. Uh, Millennials are looking at right, the kind of various applications, games, and uh, futuristic organizations are looking at a uh, uh, concept like decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, certainly, so uh, it should be a reality. So, in uh, in my view, uh, it is becoming reality. A lot of use cases are coming up. So, Sarath, uh, let's hear from you. Which are those uh, top use cases or applications around decentralization of a uh, uh, of uh, any of those economies operations with the help of a blockchain uh, yeah you, what do you yeah uh, thanks prasanna thanks for having uh, me and, and pleasure to be speaking with you so when it comes to the changing world order the way the entire world is being uh, polarized right and and countries have to look after their own interests so that's where technology becomes an enabler in furthering uh, self interest and let me give you one, one example where we all see that dollar is rising and other currencies are depreciating against the dollar. That's why countries are looking at how they can create a, a currency bridge or a, a CBDC or a central bank digital currency bridge. And if I can quote a, a recent example where RBI is saying that they'll be settling international uh, cross-border trade in, in Indian rupees. So imagine a case where a distributed ledger technology is being used to settle uh, cross-border trade transactions. And we all see that most of the central banks are already moving towards adopting wholesale CBDCs, and which have a bigger role to play in removing friction and bringing down costs for cross-border trade. So that's one area where, especially in payments and cross-border commerce, uh, I can see a lot of action already happening as far as blockchain technology is concerned. Now, coming back to uh, the creator economy or the decentralized economy, uh, as we all are moving towards the new new version of the internet, Web 3.0, where blockchain has a um, enabling role to play. It's one of the enabling technologies along with artificial intelligence and 3D and, and robotics. So that's where a, a decentralized approach to identity is also needed to enable users to interact seamlessly in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, as uh, Colonel Indrajit Singh sir also pointed out. So I think both in terms of uh, commerce in the new era of internet, Web 3 economy, as well as metaverse commerce, I can see a lot of potential and, and many brands and businesses are already uh, embracing this new uh, technology to reach out to new set of audiences because the new generation is no longer on, on the Facebook and Insta of the world. They are in, in immersive worlds. So to cater to those audiences, uh, companies and brands and even banks now. So recently even Union Bank of India, they started their um, offerings in, in, in Metaverse, right? And they are, they are beginning with... Um, spreading awareness about the products, but as and when we have right regulations in place by RBI, we might see some banking activity happening in, in the metaverse as well. Yeah, I think certainly you rightly pointed out, sir, that a lot of uh, new applications are coming with a blockchain-based uh, uh, kind of a technology. I could see uh, many banks are collaborating for uh, decentralized KYC in India, or how RBI Innovation Hub is driving this momentum by creation of awareness of a blockchain, uh, followed by actual use cases, practicing it out with uh, uh, large-scale banks. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but for sure, uh, I think blockchain is uh, going to be reality in a uh, banking industry sooner or later. Use cases like trade finance, uh, domestic uh, letter of credit, or you talk about a uh, marketplace of uh, assets, uh, lending against fixed deposits or lending against any of those assets are uh, with the banks. I, it will be a new wave of uh, or new business models coming in. Uh, and for sure, while there are some uh, challenges around cryptocurrency or a virtual digital asset, as far as India is concerned, but there are no challenges for blockchain to be get adopted by banking industry, right? What we have seen largely bank chain followed by EBIC or income tax department or IDRBT, NIBM, RBI Innovation Hub, IFSCA, these regulators are openly are accepting blockchain technology. So, so it's a big thing which is coming up and best thing for us that regulator has understood the power of blockchain and a lot of uh, uh, research, a lot of uh, work is happening in the 
Indian banking, Indian insurance, or Indian BS, BFSI ecosystem. Uh, but uh, there could be another angle to look at from a legal perspective or a, a, a law perspective. So let's understand, understand from uh, uh, Dr. Pawan Dugal uh, how it will impact of uh, ongoing uh, uh, legal trends or ongoing law. So let's understand from you. Uh, out here we have uh, uh, Lopa Ma'am. Uh, Lopa Ma'am, what's your view on uh, on uh, on the economy and how blockchain is going to change uh, the economy? It's being said that uh, by 2030, trillions of uh, dollars will be saved or uh, a lot of business models like cross-border payment, trade finance are going to be impacted by the, by the, by the blockchain. And we could see how JP Morgan is adopting uh, for cross-border payment, there are some initiatives wherein Indian banks are so adopted with that. So what's your view on how economy is going to change or get impacted, rather positive impacted by the blockchain technology? Very good question, uh, Prasanna. Blockchain technology has emerged as a true game changer. When focusing on blockchain and economic development, the foremost industry that takes the limelight is banking and financial sector. According to World Economic Forum, at least 10% of global GDP is being stored on blockchain platform by end of 2025. So we can actually going to expect a huge transformation we can also see a successful implementation of blockchain apart from a uh, banking industry. Some of the major examples are real estate, retail, healthcare, education, crowdfunding, cryptocurrency exchanges, and cybersecurity also actually going to use a huge uh, capability of the blockchain. They all have direct or indirect impact on global economy. Early adopter of the blockchain technology is going to you know, enjoy the benefit. And obviously, blockchain is going to be a, a kind of new era in are uh, going to uh, create a new era, which is actually uh, have a huge impact on the economy globally. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Indraji ji, I wanted to understand from you uh, while we are talking. A lot of uh, new business models are coming in. Uh, what we have seen, internet, right? It took uh, 20, 25 years for internet to uh, order a pizza or to do a digital payments. Uh, uh, on a UPI and uh, Google Pay, phone Pay, we keep on hearing, right? Uh, but I want to understand you, uh, is this uh, is this really reality, right? There are a lot of uh, new business models or uh, new economies are com coming in. We used to say uh, creation of a website was a war factor in uh, early 2000. Today, people talk about NFTs. I have a NFTs or uh, I think, is it, is it a really fungible kind of experiment? Although it is called as a non-fungible tokens. Right, so so in my view, tokenization will prevail. Right, tokenization will be there forever. But the kind of uh, investments, kind of a uh, research, and the kind of a uh, work is happening in a uh, another layer of uh, this world, right? Which is a uh, non-fungible. Right, so you talk about millennials, lot of games, sports clubs, uh, NBA top shot. There are companies like Coca-Cola, Vodafone. Quite a lot of people are investing into this phenomena, uh, non-fungible tokens. So, would you like to highlight on? How real is the non-fungible token? Do you really see there are some kind of a business models around a non-fungible token? Is it really like if you see the Bitcoin, although Bitcoin, many countries has its own view or India has its own view, but it is one of those top use case of a blockchain. Right. So do you feel that NFT is also one of those use cases like what Bitcoin has uh, uh, done the turnaround? Right. Uh, NFTs will do that. Yeah, so it's a very interesting use case and why it's really catching up uh, over a period of time uh, while we are talking of the NFT and at the same time, we are also talking in the same breath, the Web3.0 uh, and also we are uh, talking of uh, the metaverse, right? And uh, what has happened is uh, the NFT becomes synonymous 
to the metaverse as a token for buying and selling right so that's where the nft is really picked up for uh, you know either buying a land or your you know buying things in metaverse uh, you want to buy shoes in metaverse and uh, the complete uh, digital realm that combines the virtual and the augmented reality uh, that's what is the metaverse so, so the currency uh, in the metaverse uh, you know it has become the nft though it it has come up with a lot of challenges where you know uh, in the initial stage itself there were lots of fake nfts which came up storage of nfts become a problem so it's a journey which is you know yet to be taken up uh, we we have to really work on how the nfts are going to take shape in due course of time yes the in initial impetus of nft in, uh, and uh, you know uh, taking the nft to a new level uh, was always there but uh, as the you know the uh, the air is cleared up we are seeing that it's got its own challenges of nft and there are lots of hacks also in the initial part of the nft we saw almost 1.7 billion you know uh, getting siphoned off from open sea uh, in the initial uh, uh, start of the year itself so uh, while we talk of the web 3 while we talk of the uh, metaverse nft is definitely going to be there because uh, if people are going to be buying uh, any material in metaverse uh, they would be using the nft tokens uh, but uh, like i i kind of you know uh, given you the challenges along with it those challenges will definitely be uh, there till the time we come up with some you know firm solution i think uh, uh, very nicely explained uh, uh, you spoke about web3 or metaverse right uh, 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 not sure how far is our journey on the metaverse or web3 but by now we have seen the power of web 2.0 the power of web 2.0 is a lot of new business model came in just imagine people are exchanging emails or sending messages on whatsapp or uh, Uh, sending a lot of information on those ftp protocols or sftp i think this was not available before uh, 1985 or so right since rise of internet we have seen all of our business models are glued around web 2.0 so all of a sudden rather it is a need of our today's era we have to really get into the web 3.0 when it could be combination of a blockchain or a 5g or a maybe uh, immersive interface like uh, artificial intelligence along with augmented virtual reality Uh, and that is how we have seen right so those monolithic uh, yahoo messengers to the uh, whatsapp and now people would like to gain in, get into uh, uh, virtual experiences right uh, and this is what has happened any technology comes and really safeguard that innovation say example uh, during feature phones we were always glued around those web based uh, chat boxes and uh, emails and so on while smartphone came in there were different business models right so all of a sudden when we around the uh, ar vr glasses all of a sudden people would like to see some kind of innovation to entertainment movies real estate uh, uh, retail uh, automatically it will come come to the bfsi industry also so i think you touched upon very very important aspect how nft is one of those business model wherein the right assets uh, 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 which are part of a, some of those nft marketplaces could be a game changer uh, economy and certainly could say we could say billions of the econ- uh, impact we have seen last year maybe year onwards we will see many more other use cases i will not be surprised every uh, industry will come up with the, their own uh, nft market which is not only bfsi healthcare uh, real estate followed and there are a lot of experiments are already happening uh, in my personal experience we are working with some of those uh, uh, tokenizing some of those uh, physical real estates right so let's see how far it adoption will go on and certainly metaverse is making a lot of noise right so i have seen uh, recently some of those universities are creating their metaverse existence right or every physical platform now getting onto their existence on uh, metaverse uh, example hsbc has bought some land into the sandbox metaverse uh, like we have some platforms like windows or unix we have now typical platforms for blockchain as well as metaverse also, right so that much investment is happening so would like to understand from sarat uh why it is all of sudden right uh, we we were so happy in 2020 before pandemic and during pandemic it was a different transformation and now people are now habitual with the transformation but this is something big which is coming up right and how we should be ready for that so sarath over to you uh, for this what is web3 metaverse how it is going to change and why it is important for everybody individual corporates country to be ready for 
uh, for that. And what Earth ID is really primarily doing in this area to really create some kind of a protocol or interoperability standards and so on. Yeah. Sure. So what happened during COVID was so COVID uh, accelerated the pace of digital transformation. It might sound as a cliche, but it's a fact now. And it also gave impetus to people or businesses to adopt digital technology. So that was one of the biggest drivers or catalyst for uh, accelerating the process of digital transformation. So people, they were more open to uh, adopting new technologies. And that's how uh, the entire push towards uh, digitization also happened, right? And so what, what's happening is people are now breaking away from centralized ecosystems or, or the monopoly of big techs, and they, want, they are more open to a decentralized uh, network approach when it comes to businesses or marketplaces, right? And that's where uh, Web3 and blockchain, because blockchain is, is the underlying protocol for Web3 stack, right? And similarly, you have identity, and then you have other applications which will be built on top of it. Now, what's more important is, as, as the discourse around Metaverse and Web3 is picking up steam, we need to envision a multi-chain world because there will not be one blockchain ruling all. There will be a multitude of blockchains. So what, what can actually drive conversation or transactions across multiple chains? And that's where interoperability, standardization, and open standards are very, very important. So what we are doing at Authide is we joined uh, one of the uh, leading St standards forum called Metaverse Standards Forum, where Meta is one of the founding members. Uh, Adobe is there, Qualcomm is there. Now we have Tech Mahindra, Infosys Consulting also joining as participating members. So what we are growing, doing is we are trying to come together to build open standards for, for the, uh, the Metaverse-based ecosystem, right? And which is very much needed. So if you look at the identity piece itself, so now decentralized identity or uh, decentralized identifiers are now classified as a Web3 uh, W3C standard, right? So I think this is one of the building blocks because in, in the immersive world, proving your identity or asserting your identity is going to be a challenging one. And accordingly, if we if we retain the same loopholes what we have in the Web2 era, there will be another set of attacks, impersonation attacks, identity thefts, which uh, I think you know, Colonel Indrajit Singh sir will also be able to explain uh, better how the same problems of the Web2 world will also percolate in the, in the metaverse and the immersive world. So that's where a decentralized approach is needed, interoperability and open standards will not only drive further adoption, but will also make different ecosystems speak to each other. And that's where we'll have a seamless flow of data commerce across different uh, metaverses, right? Because if you look at a big text metaverse, for example, let's say if Microsoft is building its own metaverse, but somebody is building a metaverse on sandbox, which is completely decentralized. How do we talk to different ecosystems? That's where interoperability, open standards are very much necessary. I think wonderful. I think, uh, 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 and what's your view? I just wanted your view on this recent uh, collaboration among uh, 40 plus companies to form some kind of uh, another standard of from, is it really need? And do you feel that it, it has come on a right time to the ecosystem? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the way uh, open, open source projects have picked up in a big way, and, and I think the Linux Foundation is a great example, right? Unless and until the community comes together, uh, interoperability or open standards, adoption of these new standards will become difficult, right? And that's where I think it's more like an ecosystem effort. The way the W3C or, or the Decentralized Identity Foundation was able to push towards uh, making DID as a Web3 standard, right? I think that also tells us about the power of community and the power of ecosystem building. So I think it's very much needed to drive interoperability across uh, different ecosystems. Yeah, so I will not be surprised the way uh, we at our bank or we have seen in every bank, we create a lot of platforms, so-called internet banking or mobile banking, or these days we talk about chaos banking or ATMs and so on. This is all output for a current need of a customer, which is primarily around a traditional digital banking. Tomorrow's intelligent banking, which will be comprised of AI, blockchain, or metaverse. I'm sure corporates or technology companies will be creating another form factor. The way we have internet mobile banking, there will be another form factor and there will be a lot of new challenges for regulator also. How do we create this banking or a regulated experience onto these uh, things? You spoke about Union Bank and I can name there are other three, four banks will launch metaverse in, in one, two months together. So this becomes another alternate channel right? to do the, uh, but real, real metaverse, it is a long way, uh, almost three to five or maybe 10 years based upon what type of a, uh, what degree of a, 
a virtual reality we want into that experience right but certainly retail industry or uh, real estate industry has really taking uh, a lot of uh, uh, efforts to make it uh, but ultimately it boils down to, to regulation security right when we are providing any of those things uh, it's very very important so a uh, question for uh, uh, lopa ma'am how do you see what kind of a security uh, practices we should adopt while we adopt a blockchain or any of those uh, relevant ecosystem we typically indraji just spoke about lot of things has happened things rather some frauds being happening into that world how do we learn from banks or how do we have a best practices to really safeguard uh, uh, ultimately customers should be benefit of, out of it so when it is coming to blockchain technology uh, basically it produce a tamper proof lane here for transaction block but blockchain networks are not immune to cyber attack and fraud some of the common vulnerabilities and attacks in uh, block te- blockchain technologies are exchange hack defi hack 51% attack phishing attack rock pull ransomware sim swap investment scam extortion dns attack so we need to be very careful while implementing the blockchain in secure implementation of cold and hot storage even get impacted sometime we even uh, evident the third party authentication bypass attack to deal with this emerging attack vector and the nature of work accomplished using the blockchain it is important to integrate the security and privacy requirement by design followed by establishing the blockchain specific governance blockchain is a ecosystem and it's a combination of different networks so blockchain network security is very critical on chain off chain and side chain data security is also a, a kind of you know very critical angle of blockchain blockchain end of the day it's application so application security needs to be taken care smart contract security is important now when we are talking about the blockchain ecosystem it's extensively using the api to connect between different uh interfaces so api security is the paramount requirement when we are considering the blockchain above all one need to establish a continuous monitoring and assessment process of current state and it is very important to ensure the blockchain security so indraji ji what's your view on the security aspect right i think we made a couple of uh, uh, one week or one or two weeks back uh, a chain analysis which is one of the uh, biggest or best company to do forensics around or they take care of a lot of our data which is happening on the uh, uh, blockchain and the relevant other ecosystem like cryptos and all but while we are implementing these solutions into the uh, uh, private network so called healthcare banks still this technology is yet to be matured right so al- almost the way we do vaptis for this normal web and uh, mobile applications we yet to do lot of maturity into this Uh, into these smart contracts or any of those networks so there is an always dilemma for blockchain ecosystem could be around security scalability and interoperability people say and is it really decentralized so what's your view on the uh, security and uh, regulatory aspects uh, around uh, right. blockchain ecosystems yeah, yeah. Uh, so i i will pick up the cue from where you know sharath was saying about the the metaverse economy and uh, one of the very interesting studies which have come up by city bank uh, where they saying that Uh, the metaverse economy is practically going to be around 8 trillion to 13 trillion by 2030 and there will be up to almost 5 billion users that's really huge and it could be the next gen internet and that's what we are looking at though we really don't know when it's going to really come up but at the same time the challenges or the security threats remain with the metaverse and i will put it as as 3 m's 
Uh, one is the monitoring users where, you know, they actually pick up or track what you do, what you look at, uh, what, what are your, you know, postures, uh, what are your facial expressions, what are your vocal inflections, your, what are the vital signs, even they can, they can pick up your heart rate, respiration, pupil, uh, galvanic uh, skin response. So they can monitor you to that level now. And that is the data which the augmented reality and the virtual reality component is going to really have it. And then you're going to have the manipulating users where you can use a deep fake to fake any identity because you already have the data which you have collected and you can you know, create any pers uh, person with an avatar and uh, work it out that way. And then you really work on with the monetizing users where you are selling the data, right? Uh, using what we have collected with AR VR devices because they're going to be multi uh, metaverses and how each one of them is actually going to store. So we are going to have the identity related thefts, which are really a problem for us. We are going to have the data related thefts, which are there, the privacy related th thefts, which are there, your economy related thefts. And we're already seeing, you know, um, uh, NFT stealings, which are already there. Then also the governance related. Now we are going to have a major challenge. While in the blockchain, uh, we are still struggling with coming up the regulation on a country level. Now we are going to have a metaverse and there are, are going to be multi, multi metaverse across the globe. How are we really going to work it out? So uh, these are the kind of challenges which we see and it's really uh, a point of concern as to how we are going to uh, you know, manage the new type of metaverse data? What are the privacy issues? What are the uh, data handling issues? What are the impersonation issues? What are the uh, avatar authentication methods, right? Because you want the avatar to be used along, uh, along you know, the interoperability part to the other metaverse as well, right? So that identity uh, transportation is going to be a bigger challenge and the trust between the different uh, metaverses is again we are going to see that way so uh, huge uh, eco uh, kind of a landscape of threats which is uh, coming up along with the uh, the metaverse which is there and one thing which we had to really think of you know the meta corps how are we really going to train them because we are right now having the concept of the cyber corps to catch the cyber criminals right and and the other thing is the meta laws what are the laws going to be defining uh, the people committing the crime, the metaverse? And we've already seen rape happening in the metaverse. There's a groping happening in the metaverse, molestation kind of happening in the metaverse. So identity theft, the credential theft, ransomware. So huge uh, kind of uh, uh, you know cyber threats are part of the metaverse, which is going to come up. Yeah, wonderful. I think uh, uh, the way I'm hearing you, uh, Colonel Inderjitji, I think, uh, you are sitting on full of knowledge, right? How how ecosystem is adopting blockchain, but how they should adopt. Yeah, so uh, Loba ma'am, you spoke about uh, uh, how blockchain is uh, uh, impacting the economy. You spoke about uh, uh, how JP Morgan is really working around uh, uh, blockchain technology and so on. Would you like to understand for, from you that DeFi, right? Which are those companies, decentralized finance companies, uh, which has given some kind of a, some kind of a challenge rather these companies has a, a lot of a market cap now over 150 billion but the way we have seen last uh, three to four weeks the market uh, game right so i think there is a lot to do around DeFi, although a lot of a challenging situation they have faced but the 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 opportunity is what blockchain brings on and with the right regulation on a blockchain we can have a, a better DeFi companies rather than we can have a uh, C5 companies following uh, blockchain. So what's your view on uh, DeFi companies? What's your advice for uh, the customer who are availing these DeFi services, right? Considering uh, the frauds, considering the need of a regulation for any of those business models. Yeah, you may want to add your inputs. So when we look at the decentralized finance or DeFi, it has been a hot topic in crypto space for some time and a real game changer in the financial sector. Decentralized finance harness the power of blockchain 
and combined with crypto smart contract and internet technologies has demonstrated it to the world that it does have substantial benefit to offer it's immutable accessibility everyone permissionless and interpretable because it rely on the blockchain technology decentralized is more and more transparent efficient and mainly secure alternative to the traditional financial service with reduced risks of fraudulent activities corruption and even insufficient uh, management of user asset it's eliminate the involvement of intermediaries thereby creating an inclusive and reliable financial system where people need to uh, pay very less service charges because there are a kind of very minimal intermediaries or uh, you know uh, lack of intermediaries now coming to the regulatory part when you have wealth there is a requirement to protect it and govern it by the regulator and it's a mandatory requirement to make this alternative a trustworthy but the challenge is uh this particular system currently connecting the different geography not like earlier how you have a geographical boundaries and governed by the different regulator but yes the regulation is very much important this is a emerging field and i, I believe regulators are also working on this area and can, we can see the uh, improvement in this sector and uh, in future we can see the match uh, with this uh, maturity of the technology you can see the effective regulation stringent regulation but yes most important i feel the qiec process is most important in this area cuz mm, that is one of the basic requirement when we are dealing with the wealth and obviously to make it a uh, alternative from tradition uh, traditional method of trading it is very important that it needs to be regulated yeah inderjit ji you want to add any inputs around the same questions uh, where uh, defi there are around 200 300 companies globally worldwide i have seen the traction from 2 billion to 150 plus billion right and all of a sudden it is coming down right? right so i think what we have seen in a banking ecosystem is a very good robust ecosystem with lot of compliance security every pi money uh, given by a customer to the banks is safeguarded with lot of norms right so what's your view on uh, future of defi do they have to learn lot of things uh, before now coming again back to the customers yeah yeah definitely defi is really disrupting the market and uh, with some of the fintech verticals which have disrupted uh, by the defi uh, that is a uh, decentralized lending platform or the decentralized exchanges or border transactions asset management you know insurance sector uh, token issuance bank to unbanked and underbanked and decentralized exchanges so defi is here to stay but definitely uh, you know it's really a kind of a challenge at hand to make it more streamlined because Now we have the DeFi platform, but uh, the processes which we need to work it out so that uh, it's accessible to everyone with internet, and it can offer the benefit of peer-to-peer -peer network. What we really uh, looking at with no government control, uh, highly cost-effective for its user, and give the speed, efficiency, and security for the heavy encryption and uh, and the and the transparency which we are looking at. So you know, net net DeFi will be defining. and uh, the the future is actually going to be much more robust uh, we are going to have uh, a kind of a potential to completely reinvent the world's financial system with the defi 
right? And in metaverse also, the DeFi is really going to play a major role along with the NFT. So DeFi is definitely going to uh, stay here uh, and uh, there is going to be uh, merging the scale and uh, familiarity to of the traditional economy with the security. So we are going to see that way. Uh, uh, that's going to be a very interesting space uh, for the next couple of months in the year. Yeah, wonderful. And such a beautiful uh, guidance, uh, Colonel Idarjiti. So friends, uh, we had a lot of great insights from uh, Sarat Chandra, uh, Dr. Colonel Indrajit Singh, uh, Lopa Ma'am. And so any last thoughts? Uh, all of you all, all experts, I think all viewers are blessed with uh, such a great guidance on blockchain and uh, various other concepts uh, in, a, in a short span. Right. So uh, let's begin with uh, Lopa Ma'am. Uh, uh, your thoughts, please. Blockchain will have a very positive impact on digital business. And it will dramatically reduce the cost of transaction and information flow with increased security and trustability. It will be leveraged for, or it will, it's going to be leveraged for a majority of the world trade. In the future blockchain uh, era, trillion dollar token will play a major role. Yeah, Colonel Indraji Singh, uh, your thoughts, please. Yeah, so interestingly, you know, uh, while we were talking of the metaverse and uh, I, I brought up about the security challenges which are there and the, and the global economy, which is going to change. So the, the, the reality is metaverse will happen and will transform the society over the next 10 years or so, maybe because it may get telescoped before also, but next 10 years, we are likely to see that. But the problems will be similar or the worse than today's social media so we need to have the right kind of regulations, right kind of laws, right, uh, right kind of uh, security postures to be safe in the metaverse. And that also goes for the NFTs and the, and the DeFi and the transactions and the, and the decentralized changes as well. Yeah, I think uh, wonderful uh, talks. So I think in my view, uh, blockchain is a reality. It's not uh, something like which is still under experimentations. What we have seen on the internet, uh, way back in 1995, blockchain could be in that era. But the kind of a research, the adoption of a pace, not only by uh, corporate, but by the countries, like for example, China, Estonia, Dubai, uh, Australia, uh, they have a special blockchain units to really have a, a governance-based use cases. In Indian context also, Maharashtra government, Tamil Nadu government, Telangana, uh, you talk about uh, uh, largely Uttar Pradesh government, everybody is really looking at the blockchain as a game changer into their uh, business models. So this is going to be there and even many academias, many uh, universities now adopting blockchain as a specialized course, it's not only blockchain, but metaverse, web3 is now becoming a, a new, uh, new, new, new buzzwords, rather real words. Company like uh, Meta, that is Facebook, Microsoft, uh, IBM, uh, you talk about Amazon, everybody is really looking at a uh, kind of a new business unit, business models, a lot of skill sets, hiring, a uh, lot of new things are coming the way we have seen. Internet has penetrated in every business model. So blockchain is a kind of a foundational technology, slowly, slowly it will evolve and uh, will change the way we operate. And the change is good. The change is good in the sense it's going to be very trustworthy, very transparent, and uh, we'll have a lot many other challenges while we land up uh, in a blockchain era, right? Uh, so I think look forward how a country like India also will adopt so uh, a blockchain uh, 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 as a technology for a uh, healthcare, banking, governance, central bank digital currency, which is one of the experiments we are doing at, uh, at India. We will have to learn a lot many things from other countries while we adopt a lot of business models. So blockchain still have dilemma like uh, scalability, security, uh, but for sure the way we have seen uh, a new internet. Uh, similarly, we'll see a uh, lot of uh, research areas, research work will happen and the blockchain ecosystem will be much more mature uh, than uh, yesterday for tomorrow's world. So thank you so much, uh, uh, CXO TV, for bringing this session on blockchain and the decentralized economy at its third edition of a CXO Tech Summit 2022. Uh, look forward for a further more collaborations uh, at this event. Thank you so much.
For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.